Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let us start with the introductions then. Yes, Devyang, please start. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, my name is Devyang Kyadav. Uh, I belong to the Alida city. Uh, I have completed my class 12 from Sayyid Hamish Senior Secondary Boys. And I have completed my graduation B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from Jakir Hussain College of Engineering and Technology. Uh, the strength of my personality is that I am very uh, honest and reliable person. Anyone can trust on me. And also, I am my nature is very friendly. So I am easily adjust to the new atmosphere and new teamworks. And the uh, weakness of my personality is that I am uh, my communication skills is very poor. I am work on it so that I can improve it. Uh, the future goal of uh, future goal is that. Uh, I want to get a job as the operational manager. So as I have the technical knowledge, the, so I have uh, selected in the MBA and uh, I, after completing my MBA, I got a job in operational manager in good company. Thank you. Okay, Divyank. Do we have some other person in for introduction today? Yes, sir. So we have Ashutosh. Ashutosh Yes, Ashutosh, please start. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Ashutosh Devedi. I have been born and brought up in Aligarh itself. I have done my schooling from Aval Yudhi Fatma School. Then I have done my B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from Dr. APJ Bukhulam mm -hmm. Technical University. Uh, then I have done my internship in Aurora Atomic Power Plant. Then I have done as a, I have worked as a role of project engineer uh, for one and a half year. Uh, then currently uh, uh, talking about my strengths, uh, so I am a hardworking person and I have a leadership and uh, uh, team skills. And uh, uh, my uh, weaknesses will be uh, that sometimes I tend to overthink on a a particular issue uh, so sometimes that's uh, take a long of uh, long time and uh, plus uh, it sometimes uh, give benefits also that i come to a proper solution but uh, sometimes it's hectic for me also and then talking about my career aspirations uh, i think so that i have acquired uh, some technical skills and i have worked also as a project engineer uh, oh, sorry as a production engineer so i think so that uh, gaining managerial skills and learning about how the organization works how business model works so that will help me to becoming a good manager so i am pursue i will try to pursue uh, mba well and work as a techno manager that's from my side mama am i audible yes uh, shazi please yes, a very good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shazib Siddiqui, born and brought up in Oman and now residing in Aligarh for the past six and a half years. Talking about my academic history, I have 
completed my class 10th from Indian School Algebra in, located in Sultanat of Oman in 2015. Then I have done my class 12 from Sayyid Hamas Senior Secondary School in 2017, followed by my graduation in Bachelor of Technology, major in Electrical Engineering, passed out in 2021. And now I'm enrolled in MBA for my master's. Talking about my internships, uh, currently I have I have done two internships, one in Bhil, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited in Rudrapur, other in a, other in a private organization uh, named Premier International Project LLC, located back in Oman. Talking about my strengths, my strengths are persistence and courage. I have a hardworking nature. I am always looking for ways to grow and improve. I give my all to achieve my goals in spite of any hardship I encounter along the way. Talking about my weaknesses, I'm a, I can be a two bit straightforward at times and sometimes that hurts people, but I'm working on it. Talking about my career aspiration, uh, my career aspiration is to work for an organization on such position where my BTEC as well as my MBA knowledge are enhanced and inshallah in future to introduce my own organization. Thank you. That's from myself. Sir, you are muted. And that's all, Zareen. Or Please, we sir, have... sir, ask you, yes, sir. Thanks. Let us then start with the recap. Saba and Hasan. Can I start? Yes, please. If you uh, everyone to them who have of the top of the previous class. So, Zareen, what was Saba, there is some. Uh, your voice is resonating. We will come back to you. You can set your things right. Uh, in the meanwhile, Hassan Arif can start. <clears throat> Sir, Hassan texted me 10 minutes back that he shall not be able to give the recap today. So then he will miss the chance. Right? Gee, gee, because he didn't inform me. Mm. I couldn't arrange anybody else. No, it, it's not your job to arrange. Gee, gee, sir, I, mean, I ask him, or I ask the person yeah. always, uh, because Sabah was also um, had some problem for today. So I said, you arrange somebody else, otherwise you will miss the chance. So she was not able to arrange. Shall I again? Yes, Sabah, please start. Yes, I should actually say for the schools we had earlier. I asked by being no school in itself. They completed look at the for and Sabah, please uh, switch off your video and then try to speak. Okay. So am I Still, there is a lot of echo when you are speaking. So, shall I start again? Yes, please start. So, sir explained uh, that no school is complete it itself. They look at the problem from one angle. Uh, for example, in scientific management school, they were looking at the efficiency angle that how can we get the maximum output 
from a minimum input and the context of this school was the economy was uh, rising and the mass production was the in thing but it requires a particular approach and scientific management was to go for then came the context in which the economy was not doing well there was a recession uh, at that point that it, it was a point that people realized that efficiency is not only the thing taking along the people your ability is the one that matters more so it uh, focuses on the human angle of making them feel important then comes the management science school in that school the context of this school was that all the routine problems that can be solved by use of technology it includes all the repetitive problems that a management faces we can take example from our uh, regular daily life that most of the times we do a repetitive jobs now we know that according to this management science approach school every job can be perfected uh, by the use of technology so if we are able to use operation research transportation models and other techniques that in got involved in the second world war will be able to uh, solve most of our problems and this was the contention of management science approach these are not uh, the, they are incomplete but they cannot be considered wrong then comes the last category of schools in fact it cannot be considered a school but a contemporary approaches because many approaches have been proposed under this category of contemporary schools three of them uh, sir had discussed in the the first was the contribution of systems approach with the arrival of computer people started looking at the things as an independent part of a system uh, every system has a subsystem and these subsystems are independent for example so i gave an example of our university in which we have the uh, academies of the dean or the head then we have the residential side of our um, university with dean student welfare is the one that um, uh, that take part of the stream along with the uh, uh, provost uh, coordinates with the uh, various residential halls. Then we have the administration part of the university. They are the three distinct subheads. Then system approach also states that the subsystems are uh, interrelated and they're interdependent. If anything happens in one subsystem, then it has effect on another subsystem as well. So it is important that the management should look into the interlinkages, then only they can manage the system. There comes the second approach, that is the uh, uh, contingency or situational approach. It says there is no best way to manage in a universal way. It is all situation specific. So I gave an example of a demo who was a quality American quality expert. Uh, he proposed many ideas, but his ideas uh, were not in click in America. But as he went to Japan, um, his ideas became uh, acceptable there. And this can be considered a situation specific because people in Japan were more interested in listening to his ideas. We cannot say that it was not his ideas who are not worth in America, but in Japan, but the situation was different in two. Then the third approach is the new human relations school. Actually, it is a realization that there are some fundamentals which should be said right um, first. And what is that? In fact, there have been many studies conducted by the um, uh, experts to, uh, to find out what contributes to enduring success. The benchmark studies on this was conducted in 1980 by two American experts, uh, Tom, Peter, and Waterman. And the book came out. The title of the book was In Search of Excellence. At that, actually, that period, Japanese companies were in rise, and they gave a tough competition to American companies. And uh, they, these experts uh, actually tried to find out if there was something wrong with the American companies. And they found out that there were 42 companies doing uh, really well. And they said that there was nothing wrong in American way of carrying out the business. Actually, if there was, then they would, they just two, 42 companies too, had not performed well. So they tried to understand what they were doing well. So they had uh, find out some core characteristics. For example, they focus on core competence. They also focus on creating a relationship with the customers. And as well as they also figured out another uh, 
uh, findings like they are very rigid as far as the core values are concerned but they are flexible with regard to the things that are put in later on two more researchers continued with these ideas one of them one jim collins uh, he has wrote uh, two books from good to great and built to last if the book from good to great recorded those companies who were doing research at some stage they took a break and and they said being good is not good enough but they want to be great and then there was another one more british uh, researcher ari de guess who was actually a professor who was hired by the shell company which is an oil company which became when it became 100 years old it in sponsored a study to understand uh, the companies who survived for more than 100 years uh, the core idea behind this study was to uh, to indication that the companies which have survived for more than 100 years must must be inherently doing something worthwhile so sir concluded by saying that what is the core that people are getting from it it boils down to a leadership issue the companies should not only manage well but led well also because leadership is uh, makes a difference it is important and the company is experiencing uplifting leadership uh, it creates a culture when employees and members behave like a community it also boils down to the soft factors it is uh, it's soft which is hard values are soft but they are hard they bring hard results thank you that's all. thank you sabha so we have listened to three introductions and uh, recap by sabha i think in the three introductions uh, we had all uh, basically with technical and the background of engineering introducing themselves and uh, the difference was in terms of uh, their ability to articulate their thoughts because uh, once uh, we aspire for a career uh, as a techno manager naturally communication skills are very important so divyank uh, needs to work uh, Yes, really sir. hard on that account, and uh, because if you want to make a mark as an operations manager, this would be uh, the core skill which would be required. So, yes, sir, I believe. So maybe we'll have some. Zareen, ma'am, this is a this is something which uh, you can take as one of the input. Uh, why don't we uh, arrange a separate? Uh, session maybe an afternoon session for such students who have who wish to work on their language skills so we can take a note of uh, some people have emerged during these introductions who need uh, some special effort on that so maybe we'll discuss this issue because uh, we do not have a language class over here ji 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 but this is uh, important and uh, ashutosh uh, you were reasonably good in your communication but you also need to work on the flow of delivery is it yes sir so if you are able to articulate your thoughts even more smoothly it will add to your otherwise you are effective you were uh, presenting your ideas confidently but okay. uh, somehow the flow was missing isn't it yes so that is something which you need to work on and uh, i am impressed by shahzeb's introduction he was very lucid and confident and uh, he has got uh, good exposure in life and he has created opportunities for himself through practical trainings that he has underwent both uh, national and international exposures so that too is a very important way to groom ourselves so i am happy that shahzeb has done it for him thank you sir and uh, yes sometimes it's being straight forward making this judgment as to in fact there is a there is a couplet by one of the poet i think wasim barelvi who said this ki kaun si baat kahan kaise kahi jati hai 
یہ سلیقہ ہو تو ہر بات سنی جاتی ہے سو اور پرپز از ناٹ ٹو ہرٹ سم بڈی بٹ ٹو کمیونیکیٹ اور آئیڈیاز اکراس سو ڈیولپنگ دس ایبلٹی اینڈ سینس دیٹ ہاؤ کین وی کمیونیکیٹ ایون یو نو اپرینٹلی ناٹ سو پازیٹو تھنگس ان اے شوگر کوٹیڈ مینر I, for example, learned this the hard way uh, when I was uh, acting as trainer of group discussions. Often uh, I learned that uh, the best way to start your feedback is to reassure the participants first. Because there had been occasions when I gave feedback and the participants actually withdrew in a shell. As if, uh, in fact, one of them started crying as if he is no good. then I had to really learn this the hard way. So, if you uh, develop this ability, that would be great. Because, uh, yes, yes, we have every right to communicate our ideas across, but in a manner that it doesn't hurt anybody. And uh, I'm sorry, Sabha, you had some technical problems, but uh, I'm impressed by your language flow. and uh, the way you articulated your thoughts and you covered all the points uh, in a quite comprehensive manner so that indicates your level of preparation even when you had some issues and you wanted to back out you did a reasonably good job is it so i'm uh, impressed you, sir. sorry for the network problems sir no issues no issues <clears throat> Yes, we would have given you some additional feedbacks if uh, your video was on, but uh, naturally we had to make most of this um, present situation. So uh, I think let us uh, um, wind up our discussion on Unit 1 uh, with this uh, recap which Sabha has provided. But before I do that, there is a very uh, interesting anecdote about uh, the six blind men who were uh, set out to you know explore what an elephant is like and uh, they touched uh, different parts of the elephant like for example one who went uh, and uh, touched uh, the body of uh, the elephant he said that elephant looks like a wall then one who touched the tail and he said no no it a snake is like uh, uh, elephant is like a snake and then so there was somebody who touched uh, the feet and he said no uh, elephant is actually like a trunk of a tree and then there was a fourth one who touched uh, the ears of the elephant and said that no elephant is like a fan so what is the message are they wrong no sir no sir yes so actually there is a saying that we don't see things the way we the, we we don't see things the way they are we see things the way we are we have we have our own limitations of looking at things and the very purpose of uh, you undergoing this course is that you should be able to see the entire beast and your job is to integrate those you know incomplete perspectives that is why i used the term in my previous class that they were these schools were not wrong they were incomplete they were looking at a management issue from one angle and uh, this was not a wrong angle but it was an in incomplete angle they needed some more insights so uh, that is i think our job as a manager to draw from all these schools so that we can look at the problem holistically 
and to that end the contemporary approaches we are discussing especially this literature which has emerged and there is a huge literature on this now uh, the literature focusing on enduring success and uh, this uh, literature is actually not only from uh, management field from business arena in fact there have been studies that is why for example a study of history helps why some organizations or why some civilizations rise up and then why do why do why do they die there is a famous historian toyn b who has uh, studied uh, who has actually who he, he has not studied nations he has studied civilizations and uh, he has written the his uh, voluminous uh, history of the civilizations in i think nine volumes each volume running into 2000 pages and he was exploring this question as to why civilizations rise and why do they die and uh, he was able to get written uh, some records of uh, as many as 21 civilizations although he said that world has had had uh, at least 29 civilizations but uh, he was able to explore 21 of them and he said that out of them only 9 are surviving presently and uh, out of those 9 uh, only 3 are on the rise rest of them are falling are on a downward slope and he was interested in this question as to why some civilizations rise then after some time they see period of time they stagnate and then they start going down and if i can you know summarize his entire research of 35 years i mean just imagine the hard work this fellow must have put in in fact when i was reading the review i have not read the book yet i have read only its review and this is one of my uh, lifetimes goal that i read toyn b all through in its original version because he uh, his ideas are so so powerful so he has uh, used just one expression to you know summarize all his 35 years of research and he says ke qaume jo hain कत्ल से नहीं खुदकुशी से मरती मीनिंग देर बाई दैट सिविलाइजेशन डाई नॉट बिकॉज दे आर किल्ड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड दे डाई विद इन फर्स्ट सो द रियल यू नो डिटोरिएशन इज विद इन नॉट आउटसाइड we blame the external circumstances but actually the real thing is inside like for example we may say that why harappan civilization lost preeminence and we say that uh, there was an aryan there is a theory which says that there was an aryan invasion and then because of that they die or we say that moguls lost out because uh, britishers came and they but the issue is was it a healthy civilization inside within so this is i think a fundamental thing which is applicable to individuals sometimes we blame outside circumstances for what we are not able to achieve in life but it is our own lack of determination or lack of you know consistency in pursuing a goal there is there is a couplet which puts it very beautifully ke jisko nakami samajh lete hain kuch kam himmat wo to bas unke iradon ki thakan hoti so this is applicable to individuals this is applicable to organizations 
this is applicable to civilizations that they die within first then external circumstances or factors they expedite that fall that's the only role they can play now at this juncture let me ask you to reflect on this question because now you are also part of an organization which is an 100 which is a 100 years old organization that is amu in fact it is more than 100 years if you look at the history beyond university because university came into being after 22 years of founders passing away and uh, he established this institution in 1875 so there is a long history and why do you think amu survives what could be the factors and consistently it has been ranked as one of the best university of the country as uh, sir according to me uh, sir if you want to survive in the longer terms you need to be adaptable and yes. uh, you uh, and sir for the main the main reason why amu survived for a such a long time is basically because it kept on adapting the changes which are happening around the society keeping imbibing the core values on which the foundation was laid exactly which, which made all the students all the aluminized uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, having a feeling of attachment to the uh, organization and even after more than 100 years uh, it is still beloved by all the alum al aluminized and the, all the students which are currently studying and have passed out earlier also so one of the finding of uh, this fellow eridigus uh, whom i quoted yesterday the british professor who studied all those organizations who had a history of 100 plus years one of the finding was exactly this what palaksh is describing that these organizations are communities they behave like communities with some core shared values and you know all about communities isn't it for example i, I was recalling uh, when this thing came i was recalling uh, one of the in uh, one of the piece i read about uh, nelson mandela for example who to me is one of the greatest leader of 20th century i mean uh, there have been uh, attempts in the 20th century to you know make a strong nations for example ussr emerged as a very strong nation but you all know that it broke down after some period of time and it could not pull all the principalities together the ukraine became azerbaijan and all those they they bro bro broke away from the union which was created but uh, south africa is one nation which survived all those differences and even now south africa is one nation and it is one nation because of one man and that is nelson mandela a person who was uh, you know put to such hardships he spent 26 years of his life in in jail that didn't break his spirit but what is more important is when he came out of jail he had no rancor against those who has caused that misery to him and he was not out to settle his scores with those people when he became the president of the country So somebody asked Nelson Mandela, "Where did you learn this leader leadership?" And he said, "I learned it from my father, who was a tribal leader, 
and he described just two practices of his tribe the father's tribe and he said my because my father was the uh, chief of his own tribe and as also the chief tribe of all the tribes and uh, he would often take me to his uh, uh, meetings tribal meetings which would be conducted and he said uh, it was a group of 15 tribes and his father was heading all those 15 tribes as chief tribe and he said two things i saw over there which were very remarkable one when they would conduct their meetings they would always sit in a circle so when the meeting is going on no one would know actually who is the chief tribe the second thing which he learned over there his father always spoke in the end there was a unwritten convention in the tribe in the in the tribal meetings that chief would speak in the end he would listen to everyone first just imagine these two characteristics of a leader do we have leaders like this generally leaders speak first in fact leaders who are not secure within they speak first and they keep on speaking only a person who is deeply secure within can listen to others with patience so listening is a very important quality of a leader and nelson mandela actually embodied all those ideas one having this firm faith in your leadership that you have been appointed as a chief tribe it doesn't mean that you are one up others if they treat you as one up that's their issue that's good of them but you can't behave like taking a one up position and second as a chief tribe you have to listen to others first now what will happen if you listen to others first one you will come to know about their true feelings and opinions because if you air your views right in the beginning then they would be biased to speak in favor of you but if you have not you you are an just a moderate you are there to listen that's all and after listening to all then you will come to a consensus try to build a consensus in the tribe if there are some issues on on which there is some contention and no wonder uh, nelson mandela was able to rule a nation which was deeply divided on the basis of the color you know what gandhi ji was faced with over there he was thrown out of the railway compartment just because of the color of his skin he was holding a valid ticket despite that he was thrown out of the railway compartment and such a nation continues to be one nation and that is because of nelson mandela so there are certain core values that is why i said ultimately it boils down to the quality of leadership and successive leadership so there are some core values which organization imbibes in its members so what palaksh was for example talking about amu that the kind of bond the attachment that alumni have i have been to other institutions also 
but the kind of attachment that AMU alumni have for their institution. It is unmatchable. Even the Prime Minister acknowledged it in his uh, centenary address that he delivered in AMU. That whenever I meet AMU alumni, the passion with which they talk about their institution is very different. And especially if someone has been a part of the residential life of it. That's a very different involvement. It becomes an extended self of, uh, of your, your personality. So that is one thing. But I think the, the, the original leader, the, the, the purpose and the intent with which the lasting, the uplifting purpose for which the institutions are established, that also imparts a longevity to the institution. And there we have to revisit the original leader who has set up the institution. You know, recently Tata Group, for example, has come to the country's rescue and it has overtaken uh, this uh, ailing enterprise, Air India. And you know, JRD was the one who started Tata Airlines, you know. That was nationalized. So we now have a full circle. And if you remember the motto of Tata's, uh, one of their flagship company, Tisco. Do you remember that uh, famous uh, advertising quote of their company? We also make a steel. In fact, uh, when they were, you know, all uh, such organizations as a part of their branding, they have their corporate communication. So uh, one of the communication I recall, which was uh, aired in 90s, when they were promoting the organization, the, uh, the caption, the headline was, we also make steel. And just reflect on this uh, statement. They are out to do some bigger things. Yes, in the process, they also make a steel. So that bigger purpose actually is responsible for the lasting uh, nature of the enterprise. What I call enduring success. Look at the uplifting vision that Sir Sayyid carved out for the institution. Talim and Tarbiyat. Has it lost its relevance now? Or will it ever lose its relevance? We will always need Talim. We will also always need Tarbiyat. More than Talim, we would need Tarbiyat. And that is why Sir Sayyid conceptualized a residential institution. Because Tarbiyat can happen if I can use an Hindi equivalent for Tarbiyat, Sanskar kaise milte hai Sirf adhyan se Sanskar nahi milte. Yes, adhyan can help, but that is not good enough. When we learn to live peacefully with the others, mutual coexistence, that is why uh, later on, we compromised that model, the residential model. But Sir Sayyid's original model of residential life, if you get an occasion to visit Sir Sayyid Hall, there it is reflected. A room was a five-seater, six-seater room. And there was a back room. So, the senior of the hostel would be residing in the back room. And there would be five, six juniors who would be in the front row. So it was more like a family. 
with elder the backroom partner as the overall you know custodian of the welfare of these five six persons who are in the front room and sir sayed would make sure that there is no ghettoization he would make sure that people from different places they live together so these five six partners the front room partners they were always having diverse background so actually uh, if we talk about this uh, issue of uh, enduring success and link it to the contemporary approaches especially this new human relations school which we are talking about <laughs> what palaksh has done is, <laughs> has noted is the core thing one the ability of the organization to adapt to new situations change change is the spice of life change is the only constant in life all institutions face troubling circumstances aligarh to faced it the biggest crisis it faced was in 1947 its existence was in jeopardy then because it is said that almost 60% of its staff and students had moved to pakistan and you can imagine a institution which is built on teachers primarily 60% of its people leaving the organization but the institution faced the crisis and there is some leader who emerges and at that point of time dr zakir husain emerged as the savior he was sent by the then nation nation Uh, nation builders people like pandit nehru and people like jawahar uh, maulana azad who was the education minister and you know zakir husain was a heretic of the system he was actually banished from amu in 1920 and he established jamia millia islamia and he nurtured it for uh, 26 odd years but when there was a crisis for amu he was sent because he was a person with nationalist credentials because jamia millia was established on this plank only that we will not take the help of britishers for supporting our education amu was pro british in the sense it was pro british would be a too strong word but it was friendly to the power of the day because they their view was that an institution cannot survive for example you need recognition ultimately amu was granted the status of a university by the parliament british parliament the, the the british government of the day so amu's view was that we have to be be friendly with the powers of the day but this uh, the group which established jamia millia islamia they were against it and they said no we should not take the help of the government and on that issue the division occurred and ultimately jamia uh, the first declaration was made in the jama masjid of amu only and they moved in a tent and uh, they established an alternate university and from aligarh it was moved to delhi because hakim ajmal khan was there he said it is not working out so let us shift it to delhi and it was shifted to karol bagh and from there uh, it was then moved to the present location and that fellow became a savior of amu of post partition so uh, i think uh, let us conclude on this note what palaksh has said adaptability and an uplifting vision and a shared will and in fact three three characteristics adaptability an uplifting vision and third some core values
which are imbibed by all members of the organization, which make which makes it more of a community than an organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.